Hi there, I'm John of John's Carnivorous Plants, and this is my indoor carnivorous plant nursery. Today, I'm going to teach you about Biblis gigantea, a perennial rainbow plant native to Australia. This beautiful and awesome plant has a reputation of sometimes being hard to grow, but with this video guide, I'll teach you everything you need to know to grow one in your own home. So, please check out the description for all of the timestamps for the relevant sections of this video, as well as my social media links where you can find my Discord. I do live Q&As every Thursday, 9.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So, come on, see the plants live, ask me questions, or you could just leave a message or, you know, send me a uh, send me a personal message or leave a message in one of the channels and I usually check it every day about twice a day so see you in there there's also a link to my nursery where you can buy one of these beautiful plants from me directly so please like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoy <laughs>The first and most important point to cultivating any carnivorous plant is climate. You need to provide a stable climate for long-term success. This includes temperature, humidity, and airflow. To maintain a stable climate of 40-80% to 80 humidity, 60-80 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit, and steady airflow, I suggest the following. Use a humidifier near your grow area to maintain humidity. Bags, clear plastic cups, and humidity domes work, but these options are a poor replacement for ambient humidity. Bags and plastic cups in particular can amplify the sun and roast plants with high sun exposure if grown on a windowsill. Use a space heater or air conditioner to keep your temperature between 65 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Going too far out of this temperature range can cause stress to the immune systems of the plants and lead to more fungal and pest infections. To measure your grow area's climate, I highly recommend purchasing a thermometer or humidity gauge like this one. There's a link in the description to buy one from Amazon. The next important point to cultivating carnivorous plants is lighting. The sun is the best light you can have for your plants. Since most homes do not have windowsills that provide enough light, indoor growers are left to using indoor LED grow lights. Here you can see that I use an array of different fixtures. No matter what kind of lights you use, make sure to drape the cords before going to your outlet to prevent water-related electrical fires. An appropriately rated timer for your lights is critical to the long-term health of your plants. As a quick overview, lighting sources should be four to six inches away from most species of carnivorous plants. I recommend Yescom 225 lights as they cost around $30 off Amazon and work great for smaller collections. You can use four foot LED shop lights from most big box stores as well. I have a link in the description to the red blue sun coat lights that I use for some of my racks. Make sure that you provide at least 12 hours of direct light to your plants a day. Going under this amount can stress certain tropical plants. Like climate shifts, this can lead to decreased immune function. Even plants like to sleep, and some like Biblis only digest prey at night. As a safety tip, make sure you drape your cords and have a low spot to prevent water-related electrical fires. If you are growing your plants outside or on a window, use the species-specific lighting preference later in this video as a guide to how much exposure the plant should receive. Next up, soil. Most carnivorous plants occur in nutrient-poor soils. I grow all of mine in either a mix of peat and perlite or straight long fiber sphagnum moss. Always make sure your medium is thoroughly wet and mixed, if the medium is dry, the plants will die. Never use any medium with fertilizers. The nutrients will burn most carnivorous plant species roots. Always make sure you rinse your peat and perlite before use. And lastly, if you do not want to make your own mix, I sell pre-made carnivorous plant medium packs on my website. There's a link in the description. One of the most common questions I see is how do I mix my medium? First I use peat. Then I add perlite. I use a hoe and mix it all thoroughly together. I then take my pots, fill it thoroughly to the top, and give it a slight pat down. Always make sure to thoroughly top water your pots. And as you can see here in this last scene, there's the difference between wet and dry peat. Next up, water. First thing you need is a TDS meter like this. It'll measure the total dissolved solids in your water. You need water with under 100 parts per million of total dissolved solids for carnivorous plants. Here you can see my tap water comes in at around 100 parts per million. 
Next, my reverse osmosis filtered water clocks in at 12 parts per million. To water, I use the tray method, watering from the bottom of the pot. I fill these trays one to two inches up the pot and refill the trays once the tray is dry, but before the medium dries. For a quick overview, make sure to have a TDS meter and only use water under 100 parts per million of total dissolved solids. Tap water is usually unusable, so make sure to test it before use. Distilled water from a grocery store, pharmacy, or other store will work. Nursery water will also work. Water from an air conditioner or dehumidifier can be used, but is not recommended for the long term. Use the tray method of watering. Make sure the water is at least one inch from the bottom of the pot. If the soil dries, the plant dies. Top water all plants except pingwicula and some small rosetta drosera every two months to prevent mineral buildup, promote oxygen exchange, and prevent most fungal growth. Lastly, to fertilize or feed carnivorous plants, I use Maxi 161616 fertilizer and apply it as a foliar feed. You can mix a small amount with water and use an eyedropper or a pipette, but I prefer to use a missing bottle. I'll take small amounts on a plant tag and shake vigorously to mix. To be accurate, the mixture clocks in around 100 parts per million. I mist the plant's foliage thoroughly for about 30 minutes before lights go off every two weeks. Make sure to spray at an angle perpendicular to the pot to prevent excess fertilizer. This can cause algae growth that can be easily scraped away. Utricularia can be fed by spraying the topsoil, but back off if you see algae mats forming. Piblis gigantea is one of the most stunning an amazing carnivorous plants and is the capstone of my collection personally. These plants are awesome and are honestly pretty easy as far as Biblis go. They on my difficulty scale go to yellow just because and this is where I differentiate like Philofolia from Gigantea because in the wild Philofolia is typically an annual so if somebody is able to grow filifolia for five, six months, it's not, you know, too terrible if they end up killing it or it ends up petering out because of poor feeding or something else. Biblis gigantea, on the other hand, is a perennial and has a very, very long lifespan. And understanding how to go through it is pretty critical to your success. So for Biblis gigantea, 13 plus hours of light on time 70 to low 80s in terms of temperature 70 percent plus humidity now if you're able to keep your humidity high and your temperature constant and the lighting constant you will have very few problems growing this species the problems come in whenever you are growing them in inconsistent conditions and conditions that are outside what they would see in nature so in nature, they rarely see spikes below 45 degrees Fahrenheit. Don't go too cold. So generally try to keep them up around 60 if you can, if you're growing in a colder climate. Now, if you're in a hotter climate, going way too high will actually trigger them to go dormant because they go dormant during the summer and dry season in Australia. So you can't go too hot, otherwise you'll go cause them to go dormant. And summer dormancy is not very well documented in many literature sources, so you're going to run into some difficulty there. Now, as far as feeding goes, these guys are very voracious. They love eating as much as they can, and Biblis gigantea definitely gets the most so soil fertilization out of any of my plants. And what do I mean by that? Whenever I get done misting with my bottle, I'll you know, give the last, like, I'd say about a teaspoon or two of thousand part per million maxi right to the soil. And it hasn't done anything bad to them yet. It seems like they all generally appreciate it. Now, the one that you see pictured here was just recently cloned. If you notice in the very middle of the uh, picture, you can kind of see the stem there. You can clone these guys, but only using the flower stock, and I am not making a segment because I do not want people to attempt to clone without uh, actually knowing what they're doing. 
if you get a flower stock and you don't have another Biblis Gigantia, you can take the top of the flower stock and cut it about every four or five inches or so and put the end in IBA rooting powder and put it in some peat moss, keep it wet just like you would uh, a little baby Drosera clone and you'll have a, usually within about a week or two some kind of success in rooting it. So you can propagate Gigantia relatively easily if you can get it to flower. However, that in lies its problem is that you got to get it through its life cycle in order to see it flower because it's generally you won't see them flower until they're about a year old. So <laughs> that's why they're considered yellow difficulty on my scale here and why I recommend starting with one of the other rainbow plants before moving into Gigantia. Thank you for watching this far. I have links in the description to other great reference videos done by other nursery owners for the International Carnivorous Plant Society. These include a pesticide discussion from Damon of California Carnivores and a lighting presentation from Drew of Carnivoro. There's also a link to Barry Rice's Carnivorous Plant FAQ, which has been invaluable to my own learning. Once again, if you want to try growing carnivorous plants or expand your collection, check out my website. Please like this video and subscribe to my channel for more carnivorous plant content. I wish you happy growing and great success. Thanks again.